Fantastic show. The Lone Star Corvette Club out of Fort Worth has got 41 people here. 41, 41 cars. So uh, I think they'll probably win the club participation award. Uh -huh. uh, 2 30, we're going to give out uh, uh, awards for first, second, third place and 10 sponsored trophies. And uh, this is a independently judged show for all of the classes. The participants get to vote on the uh, best of show in, in three classes, three combined classes. So uh, we got a lot of trophies, beautiful trophies. I don't know if you've seen them or not, but they are fantastic trophies, and everybody I've talked to said this is the best show they've ever been to. My goodness, that's high praise. So imagine with three categories, you've got the very, very first ones and some in the middle. Yeah, and then the, the best of show will be C1, C2, and C3. Uh -huh. And then the, the next best of show is C5, C6, and then last is C7, and then special interest for it. Uh, anything that's impressed you, uh, especially that you've seen? Uh, hard to you know, oh, stand I'll out I'll with all what, this quality. I would, I would hate to be a judge yeah. and try to pick a first, second, third winner of this bunch. You know, it would be nearly impossible. Uh, they're purely judging on uh, cleanliness, mm -hmm. uh, curb appeal, and uh, things like that. Cleanliness of the engine, uh, engine decor, uh, wheels, wheel wells. So it's a pretty detailed uh, judging criteria that we use. And uh, showmanship, uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, put their tools around and parts and stuff. And oh yeah, they'll, uh, they'll have different uh, uh, things that they display with their cars uh, to enhance the, the car, you know, so uh, uh, a lot of that's done. Some of them have put mirrors under the car to show the, the lower portion of the car, you know. Uh, in fact, that C6 sitting over in the corner has got mirrors under the front and the back. And it's impressive to look under that car. You wouldn't think it's ever been on the highway. But it's really a daily driver. Do you think Chevy had any idea when they created this car that it was going to cause the stir that it has over the years? And the longevity. A lot of no you know, models just don't last this long. Yeah. Well, along about uh, 54, 55, uh, they really considered going out of the Corvette business because mm -hmm. they weren't selling too good. And then, then uh, Ford come along with a with that Thunderbird, yeah, and uh, that put them back in the competition, so they, they continued building the Corvette, and it drifted along for years and years, kind of a mediocre sports car, and uh, then along about the C5 era, uh, the body style got everybody's attention, and the C6s came along, and now the C7s, and they, I don't, we had a, a Chevy rep representative last night at a outing at the hangar and uh, he said the C7 has been the best selling selling Corvette they've ever had. Mm. And they don't give them away, do they? No, no. Uh, just a basic C7 coupe, you know, is up in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, anybody bring uh, the very first ones? You've got some from the very first year here today? We've got a 54 here. Uh -huh. Of course, the first Corvette was 1953. Uh -huh. They're Now they're very rare. Uh, it's uh, it's hard to find anybody around here that's got a 53. But uh, we have a, one of our Corvette members, uh, club members, has got a 54, Ben Aiden has yeah. a 54. And uh, there's another 54 down here parked in the C1s. Uh, it's an outstanding car. I mean, it's really a nice car. So the C1s uh, go up through 61 or 62, and, and they're the early models. And uh, we have, uh, I think we have 17 of the C1 uh, cars down. Yeah. Well, the best thing you guys did was order this weather uh, after the rain last year. This is perfect, isn't it? Oh, it's really absolutely perfect. I don't know how many people I've heard say that this is the best weather they've ever seen, you know, for a Corvette show. Yeah. It's kind of late in the year, you know. We're sure. the last Corvette show of the year. So uh, uh, we're fortunate to have this type of weather. What's your name? Bill Preston. Bill, where are you from? I'm from Flower Mound, Texas. Flower Mound, over in the Metroplex area. Right, yes, just north of the airport. And I understand this is your beautiful car here. Thank you. Uh, tell us about it. Well, it's a 1957 Rochester fuel-injected Corvette. I bought it from 
a college kit in 1969 and paid a thousand bucks for it. Uh, I've had it ever since. All my kids grew up in that car. Uh, and this is the third time that I've restored the car. Hmm. Uh, this is the second frame off uh, restor and rotisserie restoration that I've done on the car. Uh, finished it about four weeks ago and it has 1800 miles on it now. So, oh my goodness. So we built it to drive, it has air conditioning, uh, it has power front disc brakes with a Jim Myers front suspension under it. Um, and the car's been well received by the Corvette community. Uh, uh -huh. uh, it's been in uh, two shows in the past two weeks and we won best of show in both of those. Wow, that's quite a track record. Yeah. Is it hard to get the parts for it uh, with such a passage of time? Uh, uh, well, actually not. Those cars pretty much uh, everything is reproduced. Uh -huh. Now, being reproduced doesn't necessarily mean it fits, but it, but uh, most everything is, is reproduced for the cars. You can buy most of the trim parts. Mm -hmm. And I had to replace, this time, uh, I replaced the what's called the hood surround, which is the top of the front fenders and all the way from the dash to the grill. Uh, and I replaced that piece, which is a factory piece, but it's reproduced by an outfit in uh, Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they have the original molds uh, from the cars, and I believe that because they had the same mistakes that the original cars had in them. Mm. So, at any rate, um, other than that, it, it's just a fun car to have, uh, and uh, my wife puts up with all my <laughs> idiosyncrasies. And, the injection system, uh, is that something new to it? Or? No, the injection system was factory original oh, okay. um, to, the, to the 57 Corvette, and this is the fourth version in 1957. The first three didn't work real good. Oh, my. So um, that's the first year that they had fuel injection on the Corvette, uh, and uh, took them about four tries to get it right. Uh, this one operates pretty good gets uh, in excess of 20 miles to the gallon down the highway uh, and uh, even though it's an old old car so hmm. anybody ever come at you wanting to buy it or well not anybody with silly money and that's the only thing it would take <laughs> to buy it is silly money all so. right well it's a beauty and uh, it's nice to look at thank you well we're hoping that people other people enjoy it that's that's what the hobby's all about. Is how are you liking the show here? Have you been here before? I've not been here before. I've heard about it, and I'm absolutely blown away by uh, the uh, professionalism, the venue. Uh, what a great, what a great show! Uh, and like I said, I just finished the car about four weeks ago, and we'd planned all the time to come to this show when we got it finished. So. Well, they ordered the right weather this year. Yes, yes. Uh, Roger did a marvelous job ordering the weather. Yeah. Uh, no, but it's well done. Really nice show. Uh, I'll be back next year. Yeah. Wonderful. Good yeah. to talk to you, Bill. Thank you very right. much. You're Johnny Downs, and Johnny, tell us what you do. Uh, I'm the uh, chairman of the board of the National Corvette Museum. I'm also a member of the Lone Star Corvette Club here in Texas, uh, and I'm ambassador to the museum from our club. That's Where's the museum located? Museums in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Oh, okay. That's the factory, right? Yeah. The factory is uh, right across the highway from the museum. Uh huh. Now we understand. Uh, uh, we, you've heard all the jokes uh, about the sinkholes. Yes. Tell yes. us about that experience. Well, it was quite a shock. I, this is my first year as chairman of the board, and I was looking forward to an uneventful year and everything just going great. And then we got that call that morning that the that the floor had caved in, and and uh, it's turned out to be. Uh, other than the loss of the cars, it's it's probably been a benefit because we've had so many people come to the museum that that never had been and probably would never come. And after seeing the museum, I think a lot of them will come back. Uh, but they came because they wanted to see the sinkhole. So, so that's definitely uh, helped us as far as as far as number of visitors. Yeah. Uh, did you ever able to get all the cars out of the ground? Uh, all the cars are out. There were eight cars. Uh -huh. Uh, three of the cars are going to be restored. The other five are destroyed uh, uh, too, too, too much to be uh, rebuilt. So, 
So we've, we're keeping those cars. We're going to do a display uh, that that tells about the sinkhole and and have. We, of course, we have video. I I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, we had a webcam in that in that area that was on when the floor caved in, and it shows the cars falling down into the sinkhole. So oh, we've got documentation of the entire incident. Yeah. Well, you're quite a collector uh, in your own right uh, of uh, the Corvette. Uh, we have a few, yes, yes, uh-huh. My, my wife and I have seven Corvettes. Uh, we've had we've had as many as nine, but it's kind of hard to just keep the oil changed and remember which one needs to be driven. So we're we're uh, scaling back at this point. Do you have them from the youngest? Or to the well, I have uh, the oldest. We have is a '66, which of course it's not. Not as old as the, the, the original 53, but it's a fairly old car. We have a 67 that's an old car. And then we've got our newest one's a 2013. Uh, and we enjoy really and truly, I mean, I love the old cars, but, but the new ones are the best Corvettes ever made. And, and the thing that, that we enjoy and that our club enjoys uh, are driving the cars and going on trips together. We really enjoy that, that type of thing. You have some you drive and maybe some you don't. Is that the way? Well, yeah. The, the older cars I, I don't drive on long trips. So, yeah. like, I've brought the '66 and '67 here, we're, and we live about 70 miles away. So that's not a bad drive in an older car. But, but to go from here to Kentucky, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd do that. Uh, yeah. They just don't ride as well, you know. First trip uh, here uh, to this show? No, actually, we uh, we came the first year that they moved it to the downtown area, and we were back over on the side street. I think there was like 18 cars total, uh, and <laughs> we were one of those. Area. So we've been here every year since since that year. It certainly has. It's a, uh, the people are wonderful. The club the club are, is just a fantastic group of people. Uh, they're just and, and that's what makes or breaks a show. I think are the the people behind it, and they do a wonderful job. Wonderful well, job. Certainly gotten the numbers up. Uh, this oh, year. this is amazing! Incredible. Amazing. I think they're amazed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's really well, great. I understand on the shows a lot of people kind of wake up in the morning and kind of look at the weather and decide whether they're going to go. Exactly. And last year it was raining. And they exactly. Weren't, they weren't they still well, they still had almost 100 cars, I think, which is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's exactly what happens. Uh, we have a show that we do in in Fort Worth every year and if there's a forecast for rain we can bet that our attendance is going to be off all right well best of luck there the well thank you and, uh, every, thank you everybody from the club here just raves about the ability to, to go there and pick up their car and well and, and, and we appreciate that the museum was built by a corvette enthusiast and it's maintained by corvette enthusiasts so uh, that's what we're about Ask the local president when they when they made this car. Do you think they had any idea what a phenomenon they were creating? I don't. I don't think they anticipated that it would reach this this uh, number of cars. I don't think they expected the car to last this long. It went through some rough times in the it 50s, did. didn't it? Where it they did. Really were it, it came very close to being canceled the, after the first three years. Yeah. So, uh, and there's been other times. Uh, at the end of the C4 era, that uh, there was talk about maybe we're done with the car, but uh, it just keeps keeps coming back, keeps coming back and doing well. well good to talk to you. Well, thank you, here. thank you, appreciate it.